Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Today's class, uh, the title is called Avoid the Purge. So, it's not going to be you know, a heavy class. Actually, it's a very simple class. It's simple things we need to apply in our lives in order for us to avoid being purged out of this truth. Um, in my eyes, like the way I see things in this truth, there's two purge seasons. You have around Feast of Tabernacles, and you have around Passover. People always fall out the tree. And um, that's exactly what's going to happen. But overall, we don't just want to avoid the purge around Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of Passover, but we want to avoid being purged out the street, period. Because we don't want the most High to come back, and then we don't make it to the kingdom. That's the whole purpose of us being here, right? Sure. Everybody wants salvation, eternal life, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sure. We'll see about that. Um, where's, where's Joseph? Right here. Oh, two, you buried in that plate. I didn't see. I'm putting it down. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> You're putting it down, all right. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's let's start with Proverbs four and two. The book of Proverbs, chapter four and two. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 4, verse 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. So that's very clear and very precise. Most I say, I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. It's very simple. Right? Give me Proverbs 7 and 2. Most I give us good doctrine, forsake not the law. So when you say you want to follow the Lord, I mean the Most High God, you have to follow the doctrine that He set up. And the doctrine that He set up is what? The law, statutes, and commandments. You follow? Uh, Proverbs 7 and 2. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. So what must we do to have life, people? You keep my commandments and live. The Most High said, keep my commandments and you will live. But many a time in this truth, we take the Lord's commandments for a joke. Why? Because as soon as we sin, most of don't usually slap us right away. So we get comfortable in our sins. Uh, give me the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. So most I give us give good doctrine, which is not to forsake his laws. And they say, keep my commandments and you will live. But if you keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God, you're going to have what? Eternal life. Alright? Let's read that. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God, and the law that endureth forever. Now, the law that I, that I have to do sometimes. And the law that endureth forever. Now it's just for a season. And the law that endureth forever. The law endureth forever. It's not going to go anywhere. The only law that is done away with is what? Sacrificial law. As far as the other four categories, they remain forever. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So, how many of you guys want to die? Raise your hand. Nobody. So, every time you go against the law, really ask yourself, do I really want to live? Because right now you're not raising your hand, you don't want to die. But throughout the weeks, are your actions conducive to somebody that wants to live? Or do you behave as somebody that wants to die? Because if you keep the laws, you're going to have life. But if you stray away from the law, you're asking for death. So your action can already let you know whether or not you're living to have eternal life or you're living to die to be condemned eternally based on your actions. Give me uh, 1 John 3 and 4. Keep the commandments of God and then you will live. 
the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So when you commit sin, you transgress the law. Sin is very simple. Transgression of the law. So throughout your weeks, throughout your days, throughout your minutes, your seconds of your life, are you applying the law at every given time? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 13. I mean 29 verse 13. Isaiah 29 verse 13. The book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Now so most already know us as a people. We do have a good lip service. Just now I asked if anybody wanted to die, nobody raised their hands. Right? So that, that would show that what? You love the Most High God and you want to do His work. But throughout the weeks, it, are your actions displaying that? What do you do throughout the weeks? Do you follow the precepts of men or do you follow the good action that the Most High gave you? Who becomes the leader in your life into your, as, as far as your thought process? The things that you choose to, to deal with, how you choose to deal with, are they dealt with according to scripture or according to you being carnal and simple in your own feelings? So when you say you love the Most High God, oh I love Jesus, I love Jesus, don't just do that in words. Because it feels as if people come to the Most High God with their mouth, but their heart is far removed. Who can tell me what is the heart of men? Yeah, uh, Israel. Mark 721. What? Mark 721. Let's read that, um, Joseph. Let's find out what is the heart of men. How is the heart of men removed far from God? The book of The Book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil lies, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. So when you look at all these attributes, um, can you perform those attributes using the organ that's pumping blood in your heart? I mean in your chest? No. It requires for you to use your mind. So your mind has the option of applying God's laws or applying the precepts of men. Because there are ways to deal with things. You could choose to do things on a godly level or you could choose to deal with things on what? On a carnal level. And majority of the time we like to run to the carnal side of us. But the scripture says in Psalm, blessed is he that doeth righteousness every time. Because throughout the weeks, who's there to monitor you? Nobody. So you become your own boss. You gotta monitor yourself to make sure that you walk in, in uh, straight in the, in the eyes of the Most High God. Because when he returns, he's gonna give every man a reward according to his doing. Not according, he's not gonna pay you according to what I did. He's gonna pay you according to what you do. So if you wanna avoid the purge, every day you must make sure that your mind, your heart is geared towards the Most High God. Well, you're not just being holy on the Sabbath day, not you, 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 you're just not giving the most high lip services, but you're actually doing the work. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good men. So many of us are deceived. Why? Because many of us don't see how 
Listening to certain music can corrupt your behavior. Many of us don't see watching certain shows can destroy your household. That's what the show said, don't be deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Many of us don't see how a brother or sister in your ears all day talking trash can corrupt your good manners. Make sure whatever you choose to watch, hear, or give, pay attention to, give uh, your time to, is something that's being godly. Not no he said, she said. Not, um, give me some of them new rappers. Six nine. Huh? Six nine. Six nine. Oh yeah, Takashi six nine. Oh, yeah, Little Yachty. Little who? Yachty. Little Yachty. Little what, what? there's too many littles now. L little Uzi. Little Uzi. Yeah, Uzi Bird. I heard that one before. Trippy Red. Who? Trippy Red. Trippy Red. Childish Gambino. Childish Gambino. Little too many little something. So <laughs> These music are going to corrupt your good manners. Because what? Here you are spending hours on listening to those kind of music. What do you expect them things to do to your soul? Because words is what? Spirits, right? The word of the Most High God is a, is a spirit. And Most High is telling you, don't be deceived. Evil communication. What is communication? What do you use for communication? Words. So there's good spirits, which is found in the scriptures. And there's evil spirit, which you'll find in what? In the world, in the music, the movies, the brothers and sisters that's talking in your ears. So, if you want to have eternal life, then you got to start, I say, trim those waters, stopping them from entering your ear. Righteous are uh, words, move them aside. Now, if all they... Um, what's uh, I don't know if they still have that show, uh, MTV Crib. Do they still have it? No. I'm old school. So, but many of you guys know about that show, right? When everybody opened their door and they sh and brag about everything they have. If every day I watch that show, how is that gonna damage me eventually? They will make you covetous, make you want to have the things that they have. So, okay, covetous, but in, okay, I'm covetous now, I want what they, what, what, um, what they have. But I have a house. So how is that going to affect me? It's going to make you think that your house is not good enough. You won't be grateful for anything. Like That's that. the key word I was looking for. Grateful of being appreciated. I want to appreciate nothing that I have because why? I'm looking at the next man. Meanwhile, you bless beyond blessed. But every day you watch an MTV crib, you're seeing uh, Kelly. I remember that episode because I wanted that house. I ain't gonna front. <laughs> no, like, it's like he took a page from my book because I said if I was rich, I was gonna build a house. And certain things he had was like, damn, this dude was looking at my brain. That's more for it. Nah, that, that's mine. I'm talking about, it, it's more about the waterfall pool he had. You know what I'm saying? That thing was fly. So let's say I had a house that had a regular pool. Now I'm looking at my pool like, my pool ain't nothing. You follow? Like, I, I know a sister I used to work with at Gucci. And um, her man working, I won't say where he was working. Regular job making, you know, 40, 40 hours a week. Making decent money for somebody who's working 40 hours a week. She's working at my job making good money. One day this girl's gonna say, my man is not ambitious enough. I'm like, why you say that? He's like, look at Jay-Z. Jay-Z was ambitious. How many Jay-Z's exist on this planet? But her whole life is about hip-hop and, and, and watching those people doing it up. Former drug dealers or current drug dealers still doing shady stuff. And you're going to compare your husband, that was her husband, a dude that's busting his butt 40, 40 hours a week. He's not ambitious because he's not Jay-Z. Her mind has been corrupted. You sitting now watching um, Love and Hip Hop. How is that going to uh, damage you?
Don't be afraid to be Steve Urkel, man. If you got the answer, answer. Um, that would make you think that it's all right to sit around and do nothing and just fight with each other. And how would that damage your relationship? If you're a woman. Yeah, brother. It's okay. You. You got the mic. I know you want to answer. No, I'm not a woman. I don't, I, I, I don't have that. I don't watch the show. So if your wife sit at home all day watching Love and Hip Hop, you don't see how that could become a problem in your house? Uh, yeah. Cause it's okay. I'd answer the question. She might get lazy like they are on the show. And she's going to expect you to get two jobs. Because what? What? What's uh, basketball wife? So I'm assuming, let's say, I don't know who's on it, but let's say Grant, Grant Hill wife. I don't, I'm pretty sure she's not on it. But let's say she was on it. Then your wife going to want you to become Grant Hill. Because all this, she's watching the sister just drinking and chilling by the pool over there, doing this, doing that. Then you're no longer good enough. You go to the store by her, um, uh, how you say, some Nine West purse. She don't want that. She want Gucci, Louis, Gucci. Everything that you cannot afford. And because you can afford it, guess what she's looking at you like? You a bum. So you, TV can destroy you. Radio can destroy you. Because if all day I'm, I'm listening to popping mollies, you know, having sexual uh, uh, hoes, and shooting up the place, robbing dudes, like what kind of demeanor I'm going to start developing? You're going to start thinking that you are those people you're listening to. So, you got a choice. You got good communication, you got evil communication. You got the Bible, you got the world. You got the precept of the Most High God, or you got the precept of, the, of, of, of men. So, you got to choose who you want to be. By their fruit you shall know them, right? So, if for all this good news that's coming out, if this is not doing it for you, and you all over the place, listening to all kind of garbage, then that shows a lot about you. So you could say you don't want to die, but guess what? You're a dead man walking. Still consider your ways. Read it again from the top. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So many of us are deceived. Why? Because we don't believe what the scripture just said. We don't believe that the communication that we allow to enter our brain can actually destroy us. We don't believe that. The same way uh, um, an architect looking at a dam that has a crack on it, like, ah, that's a small crack. The dam ain't nothing going to happen. Once a dam has a crack on it, if you don't repair it, what's going to happen? It's going to bust. There's a saying back on there that said, the best time to kill a chicken is while it's an egg. Because once that chicken is fully blown, see, you guys are accustomed to going to the market and buy chicken. <laughs> I'm accustomed to catching your chicken to eat it. That means you work out before you eat. That's basically, a chicken give you a workout. To have a little bit of understanding of it is, if any of you ever seen Rocky, I forgot which number, when the trainer had him chasing the chicken, one, Rocky won. That's how we, get, we catch chicken back home to eat it. So you bust a sweat before you actually eat. You enjoy the chicken more. So, <laughs> Um, let's go to Sarah. We gotta be very, very, very careful. So if if you don't stop the evil communication, by the time you realize it's damaging you, it's too late. Just like the chicken, while it's an egg, shoot, man, I can't track chicken dead. When you let that chicken get to be one years old, that chicken gonna run. When he can't run, he gonna fly. Just when you think you have a corner, he flies. <laughs> Because they like to run more than fly, actually. They only fly when they're in trouble. They're very good runners. Anyway, uh, Sirach 13, verse 16. Start at 16. Let me start at, uh, yeah, 16. The book of Sirach, chapter 13, verse 16. All flesh consorted according to kind. And a man will cleave to his life. So the scripture already tells you, all flesh consorted according to kind, and a man will cleave to his life. You know like um, in the world, you got a sister that's hanging out with a whole bunch of hoes? 
but on the block everybody look at her as the good girl. Well, here's the bad news. All flesh consort to its kind. If there's 12 hoes and they're all your friends, you're the 13th hoe. Simple as that. So, when you, there's, there's tons of music you could choose to listen to. There's an infinite amount of songs you can listen to, right? If I choose right now, Biggie, Jay-Z, now, you know what? Let me not go old school. This is the new school. Give me some of them names again. Trippy Red. Trippy Red. Who knows about his music? You do, right? You heard a few? Trippy Red, what, what does he sing about? Getting high. Uh-huh. The usual, getting high. Okay, so Trippy partying. Red um, sing about getting high and, 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 and partying. The future. Joseph, who, who, little who? Little Yachty? What Yachty sings about? I, I don't know nothing about that. But, no, who knows about little Yachty? There it is, real. Nah. All he raps about is drugs. So he sings about drugs. Yes. What about little Uzi Vert? So he sings about what? Drugs too. Drugs too. So, ah, right, we'll stick, we'll stick with those three. So all day, every day, those are the three artists I choose to listen to. What that says about me. Remember the scripture say, all peace comes up to, to its kind. But I don't like the words, I just like the music. All beats comes up to its kind. I don't like the crack, I just smoke it. <laughs> we, um, Gary Levi, you were about to say something. You gonna put the sandwich down. Then you got a free chair. It's not going nowhere. We brothers here, we won't rob you. I'm gonna say, eventually you're gonna wanna do drugs. Eventually you're gonna wanna do drugs. Because all day, every day, you're bombarding your head with drug music. So, you're desensitizing yourself um, through the music about drugs. So eventually, everybody here in their lifetime, somebody gonna come to and offer you drugs. Eventually. I mean, many of us are old, we've been through it. So for you young ones, you will be offered drugs. So two, three years, you listen to music that desensitizes you about drugs. What are the odds of when drugs come in your life that you say yes to it? Because why? You are, you are filled with dirty spirit. You're not filled with the good spirit of the Most High God. That's telling you don't do drugs. You listen to, uh, what's that? Who sing that song? Percocet. Molly Percocet. Future. Future. So, all you think about is, Molly, who sings about lean? They all do. They all do. Yeah, it's a new drug now. That's liquid heroin. Matter of fact, one of the Edomite rappers just died from... Oh, uh, Mac, Mac Miller? Yeah. Yep. And you know what else I found out about that, Cap? Mm. At one time, a bottle of lean cost like $300. Then it went up to $1,500. Now it's like $5,000 for a bottle of lean. The real stuff. You're making money off of your debt. I won't be drinking that. All praise the most I got. So, all you guys who wants to lean, lean on. But you better be leaning on the Lord. Because if you're leaning on men, do me a favor. Uh, Google, I mean not Google, YouTube. Uh, oh my God! Oh my God! That shit! Oh, oh stop. You're making the gravel. Oh. Oh my god! You see my hair? Look, you see it? 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 You see Did he smoke it or did he eat it? Uh -huh. I think he did both. Inhale too. Uh -huh. Oh no. He making sounds. This is that room. Uh -huh.
I heard they get hot. That's why I take it out of his clothes. Ew, he's making weird noises. Ew, he, ew, he, that nigga caught something. Ew, he's like a zombie. <laughs> Don't get too close. I think he's contagious. This is what happens when you get too hot. Thinking you're gonna see Jesus. You gotta see the damn devil. So that's the that's the that's the stuff like music is glorifying and our young kids that's what they wanna listen to. Wanna take it to the next level. You're gonna get to the next level. You're gonna be in a sight war. Why? Because evil communication have corrupted you. You follow? Go back to Sirach again. We put break that down. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 13, verse 16. All flesh consorted according to kind, and a man will cleave to his life. So you're gonna cleave unto things that you like, things that speak to your spirit. So when you're in here, you say you're about this truth. But throughout the week, you like on some, yeah, what's their name again? Little Bibby. G Little who? Little Bibby. <laughs> G Herbo. G Herbo, wow. Little Bibby and G Herbo? Uh, Why would I want to listen to somebody called Little Bibby? <laughs> I have the Bible, I don't need Bibby. We have truth music. So. Be very careful what you claim to because that shows exactly who you are as a person. Read. What fellowship had the wolf with the lamb? So the sinner with the godly. So here you are, you saying you're godly, right? If I'm godly, am I going to allow somebody to come in my ears and talk trash about other brothers and sisters? Because how would I, if that's happening, that person is considered what? ungodly because they should know the scripture no murmuring right so if i give ear to it levi what that makes me he refused to put the plate down just chairs right there there's an empty chair right there bro <laughs> you like to hear murmuring thou shalt not separate this from the plate <laughs> <laughs> so what that makes you remember We like to hear murmuring also. So that means you what? You're not godly, you're a sinner too. Correct. Because if I'm godly, when murmur comes in my ears, I'm going to apply the scripture. Eh? Don't finish your statement. What artist was that again? I forgot the name of it. But there was a line in the song like that. They, they were from down south. But either way. So you give ear to things that resonate in your spirit. You listen to things that resonate in your spirit. So when you say you want to be godly, as you notice that you are doing things that are ungodly, then you should check your spirit. You follow? Because evil, right, is pleasurous. That's written in the Bible. Let's, let's show it. Hebrew. The book of Hebrews. Uh, chapter 11, verse 24. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see that? Sin is pleasurous. And this is why many of us are reluctant to let them go. Because our mind is focused only on having fun. The truth is not fun. We don't want to suffer affliction with the house of the Most High God. We want to be out there and living it up just like everybody else. And you say to yourself, why not me? Why I couldn't drive a Benz? Why I couldn't have a mention? Well, there's nothing stopping you from having those things, but don't make your life be all about those things. You work hard enough, if the most I will, one day you can have those things. But don't compare and contrast yourself with sinners. That means what? You envy the sinners. The sinners should be envying you. You're living the life that they should want to live. But because of the lust that's within us, 
we get sometimes we get pulled away spiritually to want the things that sinners have. And in in the process, we destroy ourselves. We gotta guard ourselves very tightly. If, if we talk to sinners, make sure we're the one that's doing most of, talk, uh, most of the talking. And if you don't want to do most of the talking, believe you me, sinners won't be around you too long. Unless you're talking gibberish. They talk, they talk, they talk. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yo, I was watching the game last night, and Michael Jackson, they envy Michael Jordan, and da 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 That's them talking, right? You let them talk? It's funny you mentioned Michael Jordan. You know the scriptures say you shouldn't have a ball in. And you know he doesn't do nothing for his people. You think that person want to talk to you? Every time you let them talk, whatever they say, if you have the scriptures in your head, you can still flip it on, on, on the scriptures. That person is not going to want to be around you too long. So when sinners take a liking into you, and they're not changing, it's because you're not teaching. Because when sinners take a liking into you, two things are going to happen. They're either going to change, or they change and come your way, or change and walk away from you. Like you always with that Bible stuff, I don't want to talk to you. But many of us though, no, 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 no. We love, like, it's like, this truth is too hard for us. We need an escape. So we'll go to our neighbor's house where they're smoking weed, smoking cigarettes, and be there chilling, drinking with them like it ain't nothing. Evil communication corrupt good manners. And all beasts consort to its kind. So look around you and look at the people that you're interacting with outside of people in the truth. And even in the truth, if somebody got a worm tongue and you're not fixing that person, then guess what? That's who you are. You're a worm tongue just like them. All beasts consult to its kind. Our job is to make each other better. Our job is to rebuke one another, to fix one another. That's true love. So you can't be in the truth expecting that fake love. Where you just, a, you just want a sympathetic ear. Somebody to just listen to you talking trash. As you're talking trash, I'm gonna listen. And when you go off, I'm going to tell you, yo, you went off. According to scripture, this, 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 and that. You don't want to hear it? Hey, I did my job. So what we're going to find out is, as much as we hear, many of us, we don't love each other. When you choose to say in your sin, what that shows is hate towards your brothers and sisters. Because you're part of the body. The most are going to jack everybody up for your sins as well. So when you say you love the brotherhood, love the sisterhood, then guess what? The first step you gotta take is make sure your yard is clean. Don't drag your dirt in here because if you drag your dirt in here, everybody gonna get affected. All right? Read. Ah, uh, read Sirach. The book of Sirach, chapter 13, verse uh, 18. What agreement is there between the hyena and a dog? And what peace between the rich and the poor? So here's the thing. Um, can you pull up those two pictures? And pull up a hyena and pull up a dog. Hyena will probably eat a dog. Really eat a dog. You follow? That's a very ferocious animal. If I'm not mistaken, the only animal that can actually digest bones is a hyena. They could crush human bones, all kinds of bones with its teeth, and actually digest it. Yeah, in some gangster movies, there be people be trying up, chopping up bodies and feed them to their hyenas to get rid of the body. So the scriptures say, "What fellowship have the dog with the hyena? Though they look alike, they got no business being with each other." So we're gonna go with the dog being the good one and the hyena being the bad one. Why would you hang out with bad people if you say you're a good person? Why would you give ear to the conversation of evil people when you say you're a righteous person? Those are questions you have to answer to yourself. That's what the scriptures say, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, except you be reprobate. If you reprobate void of understanding and void of judgment, guess what? You won't be able to see yourself or who you are. And if you can't see yourself or who you are, you will never be able to fix yourself. You follow? Let's go to our little book of uh, 2 Peter, chapter 6. Chapter 2. 
two, sorry. Chapter two, verse six. The book of Second Peter, chapter two, verse six. In, in turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, right? They were purged. Why? Because most I wanted to make an example of them to leave for us to look upon and be like, you know what? I'm not going to live ungodly because if I live ungodly, I'm going to be purged. Read. And deliver just lot. That's with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So in order for Lot not to have been purged with Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot had to be vexed with the filthy conversation of this world. So if you find yourself in love with the filthy conversation of this world, when the time for the purge comes, will you be purged or will you be saved? Because Lot was only saved because he was vexed with the filthy conversation. The things that he saw, the things that he, that he heard, bothered his spirit. So you got to ask yourself, as you walk about your daily living, are you vexed? Are you tired of seeing your people in oppression? When you see a dude standing in the corner smoking weed, does that bother your spirit? Smoking cigarette, does it bother your spirit? When you hear a song about a dude talking prostituting your sisters, selling drugs, does that vex your spirit or do you glory in it? But yet we're in the truth. We don't want to die. We don't want to fall asleep either. Right? right. So. We gotta stay up. Um, keep reading. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing, in hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. See, the scripture tells you surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. So when you're looking and hearing all this thing that's happening, and you're not vexed with it, instead you want to partake with it. Do you have a righteous soul? Now it's not over for you because you're still alive and breathing, but something got to change. Because if you don't change, the scripture that keep my commandments and live. If you don't want to come back to the most high God, eventually he's going to have to do away with you. Read. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So, most I know how to deliver the righteous. Those who are vexed with the filthy conversation of this world. Those who are vexed from seeing the oppression that our people is going through. Most I know how to deliver us. But those of us who actually enjoy the filthy conversation of this world. Enjoy the warm tongues that's in our ears. Guess what? Most I know how to reserve them for judgment as well. Read. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. So, you got some people that are what? High-minded. They have their mind made up. Whatever's in their puny brain, that's all it is. They're not afraid to talk trash about what? The leadership of IUIC, the leadership of Israel. They're not afraid to speak against this truth. They're not afraid to go and live their life the way they want to. Well, there's a reward that awaits you because the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So if you want to have life, change. Um, Genesis. Where's the last one? Genesis what? 19. Is it? I think you might be. Yep, 19. Give me verse 17, and then we're going to jump to verse 26. The book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 17. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. 
Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. So the angel gave um, Lot and his uh, family a warning. Don't look behind. Just like today, we're giving you guys warning. Evil communication corrupt good manners. So if you don't fix that, eventually you're going to get purged. Jump to verse 26. Verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. So his wife was purged. Why? Because she did not give heed to the warning. Now, at any time, please stop me. The warning we're giving you, is it coming from, uh, uh, from us? Did, did we create that scripture in 1 Corinthians 15, 33? Did it say evil communication may corrupt good manners? Possibly, probably, maybe? No. It said evil communication corrupt good manners, period. So again, sometimes we'll be in our mind, oh, Man, I can do whatever I want. That's not going to change me. Yes, it will. But you won't realize it until it's too late. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter 5 and 8. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So the scripture wants you to be sober. Why? Because the devil is always about. Always, of every day that dude is on the prowl. Looking for the weak link. That feel like he got it all figured out. Nobody can tell him nothing. Because what? He's a grown two-year-old boy. Don't want to listen to nobody no more. You know, how you say, sometimes... You, you guys are just too young to, to understand good advice. That's what you just, just do. What they tell you to do, just do. Because many a time, the advice we're going to give you, you won't understand it. Especially you young boys. What, you don't know what he's talking about. He lived a hundred years ago. Things change now. This is a new generation. It's different, man. He's just young and dumb, that's all. I would say young and dumber, because this generation is definitely dumber than the, than the previous generation. But it's our fault, because we produced you. So now we're trying to fix you and correct you. You best listen. Read it from the top. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So the devil is always looking for whom he may devour. So how would he be able to catch you? Because you're in the truth. So why many of us is falling to the devil? Let's go to Sirach. Chapter 34. We're going to read verse 25 and 26. The book of Sirach, chapter 34, verse 25. He that washes himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? So if you... Uh, there was a dead body in the street. You pick the dead body up, wrap it up, bring it to the morgue. Then after that, you shower, you wash yourself very clean. And then you come downstairs and go play with that dead body again. What was the purpose of you washing yourself? It was pointless, right? Because if you're going to get dirty again, then you should just continue touching the dead body until you finish with the dead body. Then you could have went and cleaned yourself. So you just wasted soap, time, water. Read. So is it with the man that fasteth for his sins, and goeth again, and doeth the same? Who will hear his prayer? Or what doeth his humbling prophet him? So it's the same thing. We fast. Uh, we have a voluntary fast once a month. We have the Day of Atonement approaching. That's the defast, fast And many of us probably fast on their own as well. But what's the point of fasting if right after you fast, you go back to being the same little evil, wicked person that you were. It's like you fast, most side, this is, I need this demon to leave, right? I'm going to leave that right there. And then you fast. As soon as the fast finish, oh, fast is over. Come here, boo. You grab onto your demon. So most side going to look at you like you're taking him for a joke. So when you fast, he's not going to accept your fast. You're just staying hungry. All right, cool. You stay hungry, but he's not going to hear your prayer anymore because you're taking him for a joke. Give me Isaiah 1 and 16. So 
So that's the problem we we we, we have in the truth. We hear, we listen to classes after classes, we fast, but yet there is no change happening within us. We're not examining ourselves to see our shortcoming and honestly change ourselves and becoming the godly person that we need to become. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 16. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. So you see that, people? And putting away, not holding on to, but putting away the evil doings. Every man, every woman in here know their shortcomings. You just got to be honest with yourself and examine yourself and ask the most I got to help you and put away the evil that's in you. Because if you don't, you will be purged. Not maybe, not possibly, but will. There is no one that's going to retain their sin within themselves and think to last in this truth. Because nobody just go to sleep one day and wake up and then boom, they are the truth. No. It's because there's a sin they've been harboring and they refuse to change it. So your sin is just like this little baby right here. School fish. <laughs> What's that? You see this little baby? Yeah, that's you. Yep, yep, that's you. She's like, why are everybody looking at me? Uh-oh. She's shy now. So this little baby right here, that's your sin. You see how nice little baby. But what happens as you keep feeding this baby and years keep passing? Huh? Gross. The baby grows, right? I think Easy was that big when I first came here, right? Yeah. Smaller? Now, is any running around? Yeah, yeah, the little one. Israel. Yeah. Israel. Is, is any running around here? Before you know, it's gonna be as big as Abiel, right? <laughs> Before you know, it's gonna be as big as Amir. So now, tell me something. Which sin will you be able to deal with? This baby or um, or Amir? Baby, baby. Huh? Baby. So, if your sin gets to become as big as Amir, that's the day you fall out the truth. Because that's a grown man that's benching 450 pounds. That sin is going to flip and flap you all over the place. Because you're no longer in command. You can control that baby. You cannot control a grown man. You're on your own. So, it's best that what, when your sin is young, recognize it and fix it. Because if you harbor that sin, and it keeps growing, fast after fast, classes after classes, you're not getting rid of that sin, that means you are feeding that sin, feeding it, feeding it, feeding it. That same outweigh with that child you never cocker when um, um, you never um how you say it, beat on the side when he was younger, when that kid become a grown man, he'll punch you in your face. It's the same thing the sin's gonna do to you. And before you know, you out. One day to the next, but really it's not one day to the next. It's been years in the making, months in the making. Why? Because you never check your own self. You give in to your lust. What happened to that kid who keep hiding cookies in his room late night? <laughs> he got fat. He got fat. So that's your sin. You keep hiding that sin, hiding that sin, hiding that sin, and then one day, your sin won't even be able to fit through those doors. Then if you can't fit through those doors, what happened? You stay out. You ever seen them people that get so big they have to cut the whole house? and use crane yeah. to get them out the bed to bring them to the hospital? Yeah. What you gotta do when your sin get to that level? You're done. Ain't nobody can help you. Only the most I can help you. I got a script that's perfect that goes right with it. Um, give me Sirach 23 and verse 3. Because a lot of the times um, we are willingly ignorant what the leadership is doing, what captain and, and what the leads doing, what we're trying to explain to you guys is that listen to what's going on. Because when you don't 
do that, you are being willfully sinning and you're willfully ignorant. The scripture has the remedy for that. Enough said. Read what that scripture says. The book of Ecclesiasticus, Sabbath, chapter 23, verse 3. Lest my ignorances increase, uh -huh. and my, my sins abound to my destruction, Read. and I fall before mine adversary, and my enemy rejoice over me, whose hope is far from thy mercy. That's that purge. Because you're going to allow your sins, and because you willfully being ignorant, ignorant means not to know, because you chose not to know this truth, because you chose not to know the past of the Most High God, the sins just increased and increased and increased, like the captain saying, until your own destruction, until it's too late, until you're outside those doors. Eyes and up. Read verse 2. Verse 2. Who will set scourges over my thoughts and the, di the discipline of wisdom over mine heart? That they spare me not for my ignor ignorance, and it pass not by my sins. So who will set scourges? Who will whip me into shape? Who has enough care for me to actually let me know when I'm doing wrong? Because if you don't have somebody like that in your life to let you know when you're doing wrong, you're done. So you should appreciate when people, how you say, reprove you for your sins. Because if you stay in your ignorance, you're going to die in it. Alright, let's go to um, John 5, 14. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. So Christ healed that person. Christ told him, sin no more. Many of us think, okay, I pray and fast. All right, now it's time to go back to my sin. No, we're supposed to stop sinning, period. Sin no more. Why? Because a worse thing is going to happen unto you than before. Because prior to you knowing the truth, you sin in ignorance. Once you know this truth, you're no longer ignorant. You know what you're supposed to be doing. So if you chose to go against it, a worse thing is going to happen unto you. We're going to rush through some scriptures to try to finish the class. But we'll see. Give me 2 Ezra 16, 78. Because wherever we fall, if every day we're walking down the street, and as soon as we take a step, we fall in a hole, you'd be a fool to always take that same step. But it seems to me that's what's happening in the street. Read. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 16, verse 77. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered with, the, with bushes, and, and the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. So the scripture says, Woe unto you, destruction, if you found covered with your sins. If you are covered with your sin, you're going to be purged out. Bar none, because ain't no sinners that's going to enter the kingdom of the Most High God. Um, we're going to cut it short. Let's go to Revelation um, 22. Because Bishop's class is about to start. So, what verse? Uh, start at verse 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. So if you want to be unjust, and we're warning you, you don't want to listen, then guess what? All we can do is let you be. Read. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. So you want to remain filthy even though we show you how to wash yourself and make yourself clean. Then guess what? Stay filthy. Read. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So if you're righteous or holy, then be that. Read. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his, according as his work shall be. So Mosiah is coming back to pay you according to your work. You work 40 hours a week, you're going to get a good amount of money, right? You work two hours a week, don't expect the same paycheck as somebody who works 40 hours a week. So if your work is in sin, your reward is what? Death. You'll be purged. Read. 
I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his, comm his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gate up into the city. So the most I said, bless. You're going to be blessed if you do the commandments. And you're going to have part of the tree of life, eternal life. And you're going to enter through the gates. Multiple gates, not one big pearly gate. Which is the 12 gates, bearing the name of the 12 tribe of Israel. Read. For without our dogs. So outside of the gates, those who are purged from entering the kingdom is going to be what? Read. And sorcerers. Sorcerers. You're dealing with witchcraft, necromancer. You are rebellious. We turn you into a witch. You refuse to listen. You're going to be outside the gates. Read. And whoremongers. You just want to be a whoremonger, jumping from women to women, or women jumping from rod to rod. Guess what? You're going to be purged. You'll be outside the gates. Read. And murderers. You have hatred in your heart for your brother or your sister. You are just a little hateful, unforgiving individual. Or you're literally killing and stabbing and robbing and pillaging people with guns or whatnot. You're going to be purged. You're going to be outside of the gates. Read. And idolaters. And idolaters. You love yourself. You love demons. You love statues. You, that's what you worship. You don't listen to nobody but yourself. You're an idolater. You're going to be purged outside of the gate. Read. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You love your Christmas. That's a lie. You love your Easter. That's a lie. You love little Uzi Burke. That's a lie. You love crack. That's a lie. You love all kinds of lies that's out there. You're going to find yourself purged outside of the gate. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 11. Now therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now, every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. So, that's a warning. Jeremiah told the people, God is going to destroy you, but you got a chance. All you got to do is stop from this day forth and then what? Return unto the Most High God. That's always been the warning. Stop and repent. Read. And they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, and we will, everyone, do the imagination of his evil heart. See, the people decided, you know what? We ain't going to do nothing. We're just going to keep doing exactly what we've been doing. Because many of us find it more pleasurous to live in sin and to put a, a, a form of um, a form of godliness, but inside we are ravening wolves. We come here on, on the Sabbath, put on our fringes, put on our garments, give a give a false pretense as though we're serving the Most High God. But throughout the week, what are we doing? All kinds of evil things. Who are we communicating with? All kinds of evil friends. What are we watching on on, on, on our phones or on, on the computer? Porn and all kind of evil nonsense. And you expect salvation, right? You want to remain the little nasty person that you are with gooey hands and come here and shalom everybody. Expect for the most high to bless your substance. Then you wonder why your life is going down the drain. Because what? You are evil at heart. You do not want to do the Lord's will. You want blessings? You want to not be purged? Then let's do the Lord. Read the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecies, prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, Be hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall not and seeing ye shall and shall not perceive. So many and many of us this prophecy is fulfilled. Some people you could speak from today till kingdom come, they're never gonna do, they're never gonna change. Why? Because there's certain spirit created not to be able to hear this word and understand it, not able to see and perceive what it is about. So you talk, you talk, you talk, 
It's like going from one ear out the other. Because day after day, there is no change. So spirits like this will be purged. Take heed. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.